Abraham says to God, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless? And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Then Abraham said, does that strike anybody as interesting? Abraham just said in verse two, and then he says again, it's like Abraham said, and then Abraham said, does it kind of sound like he's on a roll here? He's like, I got, I got more to say here. Uh, basically, even after God reassured him in verse one, Abraham's mind is still oppressed by forebodings. And he cannot at this point now grasp the promise, the promise of God, of his descendants. He's like, who's going to be my child? He used to have unquestioning confidence in God. And here he just can't grasp the promise. So he says, again, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, no one born in my house is my heir. So he's in a dark place. He's struggling with his faith. Let's read verse four. Behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, this one shall not be your own heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside. Pause right there. This is where things start to change for Abram. God brings him outside. This is where he has him look up at the stars. By the way, you're aware that the sermon isn't a media seminar and we're, we're saving all of that seminar stuff for the afternoon today and we're just doing a gospel sermon. But this is actually a media seminar right here because what is the biggest cause of stress in our lives today? It is the nonstop inundation of social media and media exposure and it's the biggest cause of mental health disruptions in children. I can't wait to share with you the most positive, exciting fact, because there are a lot of negative things about what media is doing to people's minds. But the good news is so easy and so beautiful and so powerful. So how is this a media seminar? Because every time I teach about the harms of media, we always have to talk about what is the solution. Where did God put Adam and Eve in, in, in Eden? I almost gave it away, in the Garden of Eden. In a garden, right? In creation, he, he meant and intended for us to be outdoors. Abram's struggling here. God brings him outside. Take a deep breath. Actually, I did that wrong. Okay, Dr. Youngberg, what did I do wrong when I, when I breathed? When I went, like that. He showed it. He went through the nostrils, out, belly comes out. Take fresh air. We had a thunderstorm where I flew in from the other day. I'm like, I'm getting outside after that thunderstorm. I'm gonna get it. You get a lot of bang for your buck with negative ions. We were out at the ocean. Oh man, this is the greatest. You look up at the stars, e even physiological effects aside, the spiritual impression you are given, the, the mindset change when you look at the bigness of the universe, the vastness of this creation. You just, it, it snaps you out of it. When you're in that place, get outside. There are hundreds of studies associated with nature and stress, nature and mental health, nature and clear thinking, happiness, even cognitive intelligence. Um, the stress-reducing effects of nature exposure are well-known, powerful, and utilized in clinical settings. Is it any wonder that we have been given, as the people of God in the last days, a country living message? Are there stressful times coming upon the world? I believe I've heard somewhere there is a storm coming relentless in its fury. And there is a time coming of, a, of trouble such as there never was since there was a nation. We need the peace of Christ. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. So Abraham's outside. You can imagine at this moment he's got power and love and a sound mind all wrapped up in one beautiful canvas telling him of God's presence, his care, his concern, his power, his love. 